Anyway, speed or not, we're super excited to have uh, Lennart and Jöran with us. Um, and you've spent uh, decades in uh, management and research positions. And one of the things you've done is that you wrote a book. Uh, summarizing a lot of the things that you've worked with and seen in research and your experiences. And I'll, I'll basically just leave the floor to you, I think. Right. Your slides are here. Yep. Uh, a big hand for uh, Lena Franke yeah, and Jan Nilsson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot. Do you hear me? No. But now you hear me. Yeah, yeah. very good. <laughs> Fine, thanks, and thanks for inviting us. Uh, we're very happy to be here. It's been a great conference so far. Um, and I will uh, probably refer to some of the uh, presentations we've heard before. Now, it's an important thing uh, that Tommy just said. Um, uh, we are one academician, Joran, who uh, is a researcher and a lecturer at Uppsala Universitet, uh, but with a considerable practical experience from uh, before writing his thesis uh, 20 years ago. Uh, and I am a practitioner, uh, a reflecting one. Uh, I have to say I've spent uh, more than 40 years in a knowledge-based service industry, banking. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I had to say it, yeah. <laughs> uh, and 35 years uh, of that uh, in, uh, in the most agile of banks, anyway, Handelsbanken. I, I was the CFO uh, for six years uh, at that bank. And we claim, therefore, that we combi combine theory and good practice when we make our presentations and uh, when we wrote our book together. Now, the majority of you uh, come from IT, as far as I understand. It's important, therefore, to say that what we are presenting, what we're talking about, is how to scale agile product management uh, and the success that it had, uh, has proved in that area to uh, corporate culture to management modeling and to governance of, uh, of companies, both uh, large companies and small and medium-sized companies. Uh, we are discussing a philosophy uh, for steering whole companies. Uh, and uh, as Jürgen said this morning, uh, organizational culture is at odds with agile from time to time. Uh, and so we have, all of us, to address uh, the full corporate culture if we want to make full organizational organizations um, agile. <coughs> we are anxious also to point out that when you move from a more traditional kind of management model into an agile one, you have to, experience tells us that, and theory too, we have to have a holistic view on it. You have to be coherent when you do it. It is a problem if you try to move back and forth. You have to be basically consequent when you, when you make these changes. Now what we're talking about is how to move from traditional, uh, mechanistic, the centralized type of management to do away with typical me mechanic, uh, mechanistic tools and means because they don't go well with people. They don't go well with people of flesh and blood. That's the basic um, message uh, in our book. And therefore, we try to describe this uh, by using uh, four dimensions. Uh, uh, I have it. <laughs> no? <laughs> no? There they are. <laughs> by using four dimen by dimensions or criteria uh, uh, of how to move a, f uh, a whole culture consequently to become more agile, more organic, uh, if you want, and to make it possible for people to be agile leaders and professional within that framework. The first dimension is uh, to focus on customers uh, more than on uh, only shareholders. That means moving away from the shareholder value philosophy as it was born in the 1980s. The short-sightedness that came from it, quarterly capitalism as we uh, usually call it, and move into true customer and market orientation and to an organization that uh, creates long-term relationships with not only their customers and the markets, but also with uh, uh, its um, employees. 
And the second dimension uh, that we tend to focus on is uh, uh, to move uh, from uh, and avoid short-sighted and uh, to, to move away from uh, uh, sh having short-sighted and unwanted risks being created in, a, in an organization by using incentivizing, uh, by using intensives for senior people uh, in terms of cash bonuses. Uh, but instead stimulate intrinsic motivation. That is, you know, the, the, the ordinary uh, purpose, uh, mastery, autonomy, uh, as we would usually call it. Uh, I'm, I'm quite convinced that gamification is, is one way of doing it, as uh, one of the speakers this morning uh, were talking about. I also find it uh, extremely interesting uh, that um, uh, a behavioral economist uh, has become one of the Nobel uh, Prize laureates this year. I think that works in the direction that people like ourselves really want to, to see. <coughs> I also think that the Bonita Royce message uh, is important, why we actually can trust self-organization. We have it in us even as part of the evolutionary process, as she said. The third dimension that we uh, look at is um, um, moving away from minimized, uh, mi uh, 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 moving away from detailed instructions and controls, uh, and instead move to trusting people's intrinsic driving force to do her and or his best. The wish to be accountable, as someone put it this morning, um, I think it was James Priest. And I also want to remind you or underline the importance of what Pia Maria started to say this morning, the fact that lots of people don't feel well in their organizations these days. They're too mechanistic, the too much top-down control uh, is one of the important reasons for that. And the fourth dimension that we point to is um, the need to move away from budgeting, rolling forecasts, financial plans, broken down to personal financial targets, and instead assess performance with relative targets and by benchmarking to compare with competitors' actual numbers. That's the financial side of what we're talking about here, but only one of the four dimensions. When we speak and we, we make presentations, to audiences where there are lots of controllers and people involved in financial steering processes. This becomes uh, the, the, the main topic uh, in, in this uh, audience. I, I'm, I'm sure that you can evaluate and see the balance between all four of them. Now the important uh, message and the underlying message that we want to underline is that people like ourselves, all of us, have to convince not only IT officers and product developers but um, we have to influence senior managers. We have to influence C CEOs, directors general in uh, public organizations, board members, large shareholders even, to make this happen. Because it will make them perform better, become richer, if you want, and to deal with dynamics and competitive markets much better. Now, Joran, are these ideas about Agile new or old ones? I'm glad you, you asked me that question, because as, as, <laughs> as, as Lennart said, I'm a grumpy old researcher. So, as you know, for researchers, nothing is ever new, at least not in management. Uh, I, have, I have a book here, a reference, Burns and Stalker 1961. The book is called The Management of Innovation. And what they do in this book, among other things, is that they talk about the mechanistic management system and the organic management system. So they used the organism metaphor quite some time ago, and it wasn't Bonita Roy who started it all, and probably not these guys either, it was probably even older. But this is the first I've seen it used in management. Uh, <coughs> They talk about, they talk, let me just quickly go through it. They talk about uh, creating motivation through contributing to goals instead of through pay. They talk about cooperation, teamwork, and inter interaction instead of specialized defined responsibilities. They talk about extensive horizontal communications instead of hierarchy communication. 
They talk about informal organizations instead of formal organizations. They talk about encouragement instead of supervision, external focus instead of internal focus. And the main, the main focus here is on, is on people and culture and not on technology and routines. And if we look at this, isn't this slightly similar to what we call an agile? <coughs> Don't you say so? 1961, even I wasn't born back then. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is theory. We know, we know this. The, the, the knowledge is, has been known for quite some time. Has it been tested? Yes, it has. And now we're going to give you some examples. Uh, of companies who at least claim that they are very agile. So in some cases we know that quite well, in some other cases we, we have to <coughs> trust what we read. This is Nucor, it's a steel company, the biggest American steel company, and it, it, it is managed quite similar to, to Handelsbank, where Leonard comes from, extremely decentralized, very small headquarter. Uh, <coughs> And they are so decentralized that they double a lot of functions like James uh, warned us about. They do that because they believe in decentralization. They still talk to each other and learn from each other. They have been extremely successful. Uh, <coughs> Semco, you probably know about that one, the most democratic organization in the world. Uh, well, they actually have a voting system for important business business decisions. decisions. <coughs> one man, one vote. Just like <coughs> Bonita asked for before. So they, and they have also been, they have been growing extremely fast and, and they have been successful for many, many years. Southwest Airlines. That is the, the biggest American airline. Uh, <coughs> Ryanair basically took all, stole all their strategy from, from them, except one thing. Ryanair wants to have really cheap employees. They don't want to pay much because they are a low-cost airline. Southwest Airlines, they have the best paid employees. How can they do that if they are a low-cost airline? They can do that because they have fewer employees. It's as simple as that. <clears throat> and the, the other big difference to, to, to Ryanair is that Southwest Airlines have the, are in top when it comes to customer satisfaction. We all know where, where Ryanair is, don't we? Uh, <clears throat> we have Virgin, who, if we should believe them, have, have managed to stick on to the, the entrepreneurial culture that they had when they started off like a small <coughs> record company in, in, in the early 70s. And they have been extremely successful, and they, they have, <coughs> yeah, you all know that. I don't have to go into that. But they, they say the reason is that we, they have clinged in onto the entrepreneurial culture they had when they started, even though they have been growing. <coughs> we have, of course, Handelsbank, and we talk a lot about that naturally <coughs> in the book. Uh, <coughs> so, why do we bring all up all those, these old cases? We bring them up because they have been doing this successfully for 20, 30, 40, even 45 years. And that's sustainability. If you can do it for one year or five years or even, even 10 years, that's fine. But if you can do it for 45 years, then it seems like these ideas are actually working. That's at least the way I understand it. I may be wrong, but I, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm a stubborn bastard. Uh, <coughs> of course, <coughs> we know that there are a lot of people here, sitting here, <coughs> working at small IT and consultancy firms, etc., who are as agile as these and probably even more agile than these companies. And you're also doing really, really well. And <coughs> we love you too. We love you too. Uh, <coughs> you don't have to worry about that. But the thing is, I think it was James who, who pointed at that. It's easier to be agile when you're young and small. 
than when you're big and out. So the trick is to remain. There will be some <coughs> point in time when people will say, okay, now we can't work like this anymore. We need to have more structure. We need to have more orderliness. Everybody needs to know what they're supposed to do, etc. We can't work like this anymore. This is where you have to stretch, keep the rubber band stretched. <coughs> and this metaphor is from Jan Valando, you know, the old Handelsbanken CEO, who <coughs> said decentralization is like a rubber band. You have to hold on to both ends of the rubber band. Because if you let one end go, it snaps. And that means back to centralization, back to hierarchy, back to bureaucracy, etc. Because there is some kind of natural force driving us in that direction. Okay, now I think I'm losing my breath. <laughs> <laughs> do we have more time or what should we do? Maybe we have time for one or two comments from yeah, the audience. Yeah, do you have any questions? Yeah. What do you say, Tommy? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Hmm? Any questions? Was it all clear? I say we start with a big hand in that case. We Let's do that first. But there was a question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's gift time. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry about I'm that. here anyway. <laughs> we are multi here. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's very Thank difficult. You. Please. It, it, it is so, so the question was, what do you need to do in order to uh, maintain the, the, the rubber band stretched in a sense? It is it, it very closely tied to what we said about uh, um, accepting that the uh, decision to move, really move a full organization over to a more agile management model is a very senior one. It has to be made by the CEO, uh, supported by the board, and if there are substantial shareholders, it has to be anchored with them too. And that means that ha when you have made this change, and <coughs> unless uh, it, it would be there only for one or five years, as Joran said, but it would stick for, for a number of years, it has to be guarded the full time uh, by senior management. So as soon as something goes wrong somewhere in the organization, it's not allowed to make the decision, we have decentralized too much, we have been too, too agile, we don't follow rules or whatever. But you have to stick to the model and deal with the problem, with the problem itself individually, but not be tempted to go back to a top-down top, uh, managed, top -down managed model. So it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of self-discipline when it comes to the managers. Because everybody who's a manager wants to have more control because you are responsible and all that. But, but you have to reject that. Now I'm not going to give myself more control. I'm going to trust people to do their job. I'm not going to, to evaluate every detail they do or, or, or put in uh, financial rewards for, for, for reaching sales targets or wherever. I'm going to trust them to do their job. My job is, is not to... to, to get my fingers in, in, in their job. But so, so is, is um, you're coming back to, to the owners um, several times in, in your yeah. part as well, and, we and you do that in general. So is it, is it um, a benefit to have uh, passive owners, or is it the benefit to have very active owners in your experience? I would say active owners. <coughs> Sorry, I'm losing my With voice. the right mindset then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that's true. But, but Owners who know more about the business hmm. is more likely to let you d do your job. Right. But if you have passive owners, like if on the stock market, who really don't know anything about the business, if you, if you go down one quarter with your financial results and the stock rate goes down, they will start thinking about selling. Hmm. And, and, and that creates this short-termism we see in, in lots of companies today. I also think this goes well with active owners, but I also think there is a message for investors in here. 
yep. uh, that the investors need to be more long term mm. and, and not uh, give in to what I call quarter capitalism. Yeah, that was, was partly what, where I was getting at because yeah. if, you, if, if you're in here and, y and you, you need to have a checklist of things to, to consider before moving into company A, Y or C or organization, then that is becoming a bigger and bigger Absolutely. topic on the checklist. Absolutely. Um, all right, but uh, you'll stick around. And, Ooh, uh, yeah, and yeah. I mean, I have tons of questions, but we don't have uh, much time for them, uh, yeah. I guess. Uh, <laughs> but, um, but you'll stick around so we can pick your brains uh, a bit more. Very good. All right. Thank you very much. Well, you thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.